The Baikal M processor is a domestically developed microprocessor designed by Baikal Electronics. It is built upon the ARM architecture and serves as a Russian counterpart to Western processors used in computers, industrial systems, and embedded devices. Between 2021 and 2024, Baikal Electronics and GS Nanotech undertook an experimental initiative to encapsulate or package Baikal M processors. Packaging is the process in which the bare silicon dye, the tiny piece of silicon containing the electronic circuitry, is mounted into a protective enclosure connected to the substrate and prepared for integration into circuit boards. According to Baikal Electronics Chief Executive Officer Andrei Evdokimov, the experiment was mostly fruitful. The yield, referring to the proportion of chips that functioned accurately after packaging, ranged from 74% to 85%. Considering the intricacy of modern processors, the result is regarded as a commendable achievement. However, the company was compelled to suspend the program due to a deficiency of essential components, most notably the silicon dyes themselves. Evdokimov clarified that there was a shortage of available functional silicon dyes, which hindered the continuation of the process and the distribution of chips to partners. Without adequate dyes, it was unfeasible to expand the experiment into full-scale production. To fully appreciate the reasons behind the project's suspension due to the dye shortage, it is important to understand what a silicon dye actually is. A silicon dye serves as the core component of each chip, a small square or rectangular segment of highly purified silicon on which millions or billions of tiny transistors are fabricated through an intricate photolithography process. These dyes are fabricated on large circular substrates in semiconductor manufacturing facilities that employ highly precise procedures which determine the chip's performance, power efficiency, and dimensions. Once the dyes are fabricated, they are separated from the wafer, tested, and then dispatched for packaging. The packaging procedure safeguards the dye, establishes connections to the circuit board, and guarantees its reliable operation. Firms such as GS Nanotech specialize in this stage. Without a silicon dye, there is nothing to package. And that is precisely the challenge confronting Russia. While it possesses the capability to design processors and manage certain aspects of assembly, it has not yet established domestic facilities capable of mass-producing modern, high-performance silicon dyes. Currently, Russia's capacity to manufacture silicon wafers is limited. The most sophisticated semiconductor manufacturing facility in the country is Micron, located in Zelenograd, near Moscow. Micron's manufacturing technology is reportedly capable of supporting processes approximately 65 nanometers in scale. The company has been actively working to upgrade to 28 nanometers, the technological standard employed in processors from the mid-2010s. The Baikal M semiconductor was first designed to be made using the 28 nanometer process, which means it needs a manufacturing setup that can achieve that level of precision. However, Russia presently does not possess a fully operational domestic production line of that magnitude. In previous years, Baikal M processors were mainly manufactured abroad, particularly by Taiwan's TSMC, until Western sanctions severed those collaborations. Subsequently, Russia encountered the challenge of developing alternative methods for dye production and initiated efforts to collaborate with China, as well as implement domestic enhancements. Although GS Nanotech has achieved success in packaging, the manufacturing of silicon dyes continues to serve as a bottleneck. In semiconductor terminology, packaging and testing are subsequent processes that are crucial but ineffective without the prior higher manufacturing stages. The fabrication of silicon wafers is the most challenging and capital-intensive stage of semiconductor production. This process requires highly sophisticated lithography equipment, particularly extreme ultraviolet and deep ultraviolet systems that are closely regulated by a limited number of global corporations such as ASML, Nikon, and Canon. Russia cannot directly acquire this equipment due to sanctions. 
the limited availability of advanced lithography equipment forces domestic manufacturers to use older process nodes such as 90 nanometers or 65 nanometers. These are adequate for basic electronic devices, but not suitable for contemporary processors or high-performance computing components. Even if Russia is capable of designing a microprocessor like the Baikal M using 28 nanometers or more advanced technology, it must rely on external foundries to manufacture the dyes. As sanctions have progressively hindered the packaging process, there is a scarcity of available dyes sufficient to sustain large-scale development or production. This limitation explains why GS Nanotech was only able to package tens of chips per month instead of the thousands per month needed for industrial efficiency. Without a reliable and consistent source of dyes, the entire packaging process comes to a halt. Nevertheless, the initiative was not unsuccessful. Conversely, it proved that Russia possesses the capability to manage some of the most challenging packaging duties domestically. For example, GS Nanotech engineers designed a 26-layer substrate and employed a flip-chip mounting technique, a complex procedure in which the integrated circuit is inverted and directly bonded to the substrate's electrical contacts the project also encompassed the integration of over 200 surface-mounted components into a unified chip structure. In a previous test conducted earlier this year, GS Nanotech assembled an experimental quantity of microchips for the company Malt system. On this occasion, the yield attained an impressive 100%. These accomplishments demonstrate that Russia has significantly improved its proficiency in packaging, materials, and assembly. However, these achievements only extend to the pilot or prototype stage. Expanding to full industrial capacity necessitates not only increased funding and apparatus, but also a reliable, high-volume supply of silicon dyes, the essential missing component. In response to these challenges, the Russian government has implemented numerous measures to restore its semiconductor sovereignty. The government and state enterprises have launched initiatives to domestically produce all phases of semiconductor manufacturing, encompassing wafer fabrication and photolithography, as well as packaging and testing. The Ministry of Industry and Trade has committed billions of rubles to the modernization of facilities such as Micron and Angstrom T. The objective is to achieve a minimum of 28 nanometers domestically in the coming years. However, experts indicate that this will require significant time and resources. Simultaneously, Russian research institutes and engineering firms are advancing their own lithography and etching technologies. Development continues to be relatively slow compared to international benchmarks. Some projects aim to use older technology, like 65 nanometers, for defense and industry while saving the push for 28 nanometers and smaller technology for important computing needs. There are also efforts to strengthen cooperation with allied nations, especially China. Chinese foundries, including SMIC, operate at or near the 14 nanometer process node, and some reports suggest that collaboration in semiconductor manufacturing is limited. Nevertheless, China faces export control pressures from Western nations, which makes such cooperation politically delicate and technologically constrained. In summary, Russia is striving to create a comprehensive domestic supply chain. However, it is still years behind the capabilities and sophistication of leading international companies such as TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. The Baikal M initiative exemplifies both optimism and challenges for Russia's semiconductor prospects. The ability to effectively package sophisticated processors domestically is a positive sign. It indicates that once a reliable supply of dyes is established, whether from domestic or international sources, Russia will be capable of managing assembly and integration domestically. However, significant challenges continue to persist. Advanced lithography cannot be rapidly developed or easily substituted. This process demands several decades of accumulated expertise, substantial investment, 
and access to specialized apparatus that is strictly regulated by a limited number of nations. For the foreseeable future, Russia is expected to maintain its concentration on mature nodes such as 65 nanometers. These are adequate for industrial control systems, automotive electronics, and specific defense technologies. Meanwhile, the goal of producing advanced, entirely domestically manufactured 28 nanometer or superior chips can only be achieved through sustained investment and long term technological independence. In final remarks, the narrative of Baikal M and GS Nanotech provides a brief description of Russia's semiconductor landscape. The nation has demonstrated its ability to design processors and excel in complex packaging techniques, yet it remains constrained by the lack of modern silicon dye manufacturing. Chief Executive Officer Andrei Evdokimov stated that the experiment represented a stride forward, even though external circumstances necessitated a temporary pause. It demonstrated that Russia is capable of innovating within constraints, yet also underscored that no level of ingenuity can circumvent the essential requirement for sophisticated silicon manufacturing. Until Russia bridges that disparity, its semiconductor ambitions will rely on securing a consistent supply of dyes, whether through strategic alliances, technological innovations, or domestic production. Currently, the pursuit of a fully self-sufficient semiconductor industry advances steadily, characterized by consistent progress, ongoing challenges, and measured optimism. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us 